So unless you live under a rock, you've probably heard about the volcanic eruption happening right now in Iceland. This is a very exciting time, especially for geologists, because it's one of those times that we get to see geologic history happening in real time. Because of the age of technology that we're in, I can watch a volcanic eruption happening live on my computer, which is pretty cool. Iceland has been number one on my places to travel for a very long time, even before I started studying geology. It's located directly on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and and you can see two plates splitting apart from each other. And this is the only place on earth where you can see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge on land. This video is gonna be a question and answer format. So I put together a list of questions that I think you probably have about this eruption happening right now in Iceland. And I'm gonna answer them to the best of my ability based on the information that I've found. And some of this information might change over the next week or weeks or months. So just keep that in mind. I am just using the information that's currently accurate. So the first question is, what exactly is going on in Iceland right now? Well, there's a volcanic eruption currently happening about 20 kilometers from the capital of Iceland, which is Reykjavik. This eruption is happening on the Reykjanes Peninsula, which is in southwestern Iceland. But luckily, just so you know, this volcano is not currently putting any people in danger, any towns or infrastructure as of this moment, which is a very good thing. And it's also good because it means I can be excited about it because I know people aren't getting hurt. The closest town, it's a really small town, it's only six kilometers away, I think that's a little over three miles. That town is currently not under any danger, the lava is not moving fast enough or out of the valley enough to pose a real threat to the people of that town. So the eruption first began March 19th, it happened around 8.40 p.m. in Iceland, and the only reason that we knew about it was because of webcams that were set up in the area. They saw this on the webcam and then someone was sent in a helicopter to go confirm, and that's where the first photos of the fissure erupting lava were taken. Last Friday, I was on my computer until like 1 a.m. <laughs> looking at all these pictures and reading all the updates. Next question, and probably a question that many people have, and that is how did scientists know that this was gonna happen? This is mainly because of the earthquakes that were happening starting about over a year ago. They started getting some earthquakes in the general peninsula. Around February 24th is when these got a lot more intense and closer together, and these are called seismic swarms. So since February 24th, there were about 50,000 earthquakes in just this peninsula. And that is kind of the point where the geologists and the scientists were all kind of like, yeah, there's definitely going to be an eruption coming sometime relatively soon. Many of these earthquakes were too small to feel, but a lot of these were definitely big enough to feel them. And I heard that Icelanders were actually starting to get motion sickness from all of the shaking that was going on in those three weeks. When magma moves up through the crust, it kind of cracks apart the crust and displaces it causing this shaking. So these seismic swarms were happening and they told geologists that the magma body was moving from a place called Kalir to a southwestern direction towards an area with a bunch of mountains and valleys. The mountain that's closest to where this eruption is happening is called Fagradalsfall. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> so Fagradalsfall means mountain in the beautiful valley. The name of the valley, Geldingadalir, is <laughs> Castration Valley. I think it means that it's like an infertile valley. So geologists were tracking the magma body and they were kind of waiting for an eruption to happen, but they were also aware that there are so many possibilities. There was a possibility that an eruption wouldn't happen anytime soon, maybe for weeks or months or not even at all. And there's still many possibilities, so just keep that in mind. And there's no way to fully predict exactly when and where a volcanic eruption is gonna happen, but this is the closest that scientists could get. How does a volcanic eruption like this actually work? How does it happen? How did that lava get from underground up to the surface? Well, there are actually several different mechanisms that can form magma. The major ones are actually depressurization and addition of volatiles like water or other gases into pre-existing rock. So a solid rock could be in the crust and it moves up at some point closer to the surface and the pressure is released because it's closer to the surface, there's less weight on it. And this pressure release can actually help lower the melting point of that rock. Rocks have varying melting points because they are made out of many minerals. All minerals have different melting points. So this is called partial melting. It is exactly what you would think it is by the name. Not all the minerals melt at once because of those different melting points. So once this magma is formed, once the rock melts or partially melts, it is a lot less dense than the solid rock surrounding it. So because of this density difference, the magma starts rising up to the surface. So magma moves up through the crust 
through a vertical pathway called a dike. Sometimes, many times, a dike will actually solidify, meaning the rock will cool because the crust is too cold and it doesn't allow the magma to actually reach the surface. In the case of the Geldingadalir volcano that we're seeing now, the magma successfully moved up through a dike out through a fissure in the earth, and the fissure is a crack in the earth that was pushed apart by this magma, and now that is what we are seeing, the activity, the lava coming out of. Is there possibly going to be more earthquakes? It's less likely now because, like I said, that magma reached the surface, so there isn't as much pressure in that direct area now because it has a way out. Before, it was cracking apart the rocks because it was trying to make its way up through the dike, and it needed to break apart the rock to find its quickest way out to the surface. So more earthquakes are pretty unlikely unless there's another influx of magma that needs to come up to the surface and does the same thing again, breaks more of the rock apart. The next question is how long is it going to erupt? When it started erupting last week, geologists actually thought that it would be a pretty small short eruption, as in days to maybe weeks, but now upon further examination they think it might be a little longer at weeks to months, possibly years, which is a lot longer than the initial estimates only a week ago. So maybe in a week the estimate will be completely different. Just for reference, the last volcano that erupted in this peninsula lasted 30 years. So you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> the last time I read an update on the Icelandic news website from an Icelandic geophysicist, they were saying that the valley that the eruption is currently happening, there's a possibility that the valley may fill up in the next 8 to 18 days if this eruption continues. And the next place that it might flow to once this valley does fill up is another valley nearby called Meladilir. Geologists are just keeping an eye on it and seeing what happens day by day. And when is the last time this volcano erupted? When I first was reading about this, I myself got a little confused because I saw a lot of numbers floating around. I saw 800 years and then I saw 6,000 years, all these different numbers. So just to clarify, this specific volcano has not erupted in 6,000 years, which is actually a very long time for humans, obviously, but in geologic time, this is not very long at all. In fact, the only lava field I've ever had the privilege to visit was 7,000 years old in Oregon. It was the only lava field I've ever seen, but I remember thinking like, wow, this is so young. This is like really new rock. The peninsula that I'm talking about, the Reykjanes Peninsula, the last time the peninsula saw an eruption was about 800 years ago. When was the last time an eruption happened in Iceland as a whole? This was 2014 and this eruption caused a lot of gas, especially sulfur dioxide, to be released into the air and it affected air quality in Iceland, especially the immediate area, but it also didn't have much ash at all, nothing like the 2010 eruption that really affected air quality and also affected international air traffic. Are volcanoes rare in Iceland? No, not at all. Icelanders are actually referring to this eruption as the cute little eruption because they're just so used to so many other types of eruptions interfering with their daily life. There actually is an average rate of volcanic eruptions in Iceland at three to four years. And if you do the math, you can actually calculate that we were overdue for our next eruption. But just remember that these averages and these rates don't always mean that Earth is always going to operate on those rates. So why aren't volcanic eruptions rare in Iceland? This is because the country lies on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Essentially, this is a divergent plate boundary and there are two plates splitting apart at this island. And the island was actually formed from this divergent plate boundary from all the magma over the last few million years coming up and forming new crust. Are we likely to see more volcanoes popping up in this region now that this one is erupting? Scientists do believe that this may be a sign for a new volcanically active period in the Reykjanes Peninsula because based on past data they've seen that every time an eruption started after hundreds or thousands of years it resulted in a more active period in that history in the area. By this active period I mean like every 10 to maybe every 100 years or so. This doesn't mean that we're gonna start seeing all these volcanoes popping up like in those crazy natural disaster movies, but it does mean that it's a pretty exciting thing geologically. Next question is, is it dangerous? And this answer is mainly no, kind of yes. We can't be completely sure that there isn't gonna be any danger posed to the people of Iceland, especially in the nearby small town, mainly because of the possibility of gases that can affect the air quality, mainly sulfur dioxide and or carbon dioxide that take away the breathable oxygen in the air. The short answer is no, it shouldn't be dangerous to the people of Reykjavik. As of right now, it's contained in that valley, like I said. So scientists 
scientists are not very concerned. And it was nothing like the eruption that happened in 2010, Ayafet Yoyoko. Once again, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, but this one was a lot different because it was a lot more explosive, there was lots of ash, and this one's much different. So don't fret, this is likely not going to cause any of the same issues. The main dangers are for the people that are close to it and people that don't listen to authorities when they tell you that something isn't safe. Don't walk on the lava because it can actually not be cooled. When it looks like it's cooled, it's just safe to stay your distance away. I kind of answered this question in my last answer, but is this eruption likely going to cause the same problems as the 2010 eruption? So the answer is no, because this volcano was a lot different chemically. The magma was a lot more viscous. Higher viscosity magma usually results in more explosive eruptions. Volcanoes tend to be a lot more explosive when they have an addition of volatiles, for example, water. And this volcano actually erupted under a glacier. The lava reacted quite violently with all of that ice and all the water that was added to the lava made it much more explosive. And there was a lot of ash and gases. It was a lot more of a production than this one, than this cute little eruption <laughs> that Icelanders are referring to this one as. So I mentioned that the Ayafet Yoyoko volcano had a much different type of magma. So what kind of magma is this one then if it's so different? So the main difference between these two magmas is that the one we see now is a mafic magma and it forms a rock called basalt, which I'll talk about in the next question. The type of magma at the more explosive eruption in 2010 was an intermediate or andesitic magma. So the magma that is sourcing the current eruption has a lot less silica and a lot more magnesium and iron. And this has effect on the types of minerals that form in the rock once it cools. The preliminary temperature readings that have been taken of this current lava flow at Gelding Gadelier are about 1,190 degrees Celsius. So why is this eruption so special other than the fact that it hasn't erupted in 6,000 years? This is the fact that the magma source actually comes from much deeper down than we originally thought. A lot of the magmas that have sourced the volcanoes in this peninsula in the past thousands of years have been very different in composition. Like I was saying earlier, the main mechanisms of magma formation is partial melting of pre-existing rock in the crust. Sometimes we'll see partial melting of the mantle as well, but many times with volcanoes, we'll see an evolution of the magma as it rises up through the crust and kind of mixes together with other types of rock. So scientists were doing some preliminary tests of this lava that they got from the current eruption, and they actually figured out, based on the analyses they did, that the magma came from 17 to 20 kilometers underground. And this is actually pretty much straight from the mantle. And it's special because the volcanic eruptions that have happened in this peninsula in the past thousands of years have been from a different source. They've been mostly from the crust and not as deep. What kind of rocks are being formed exactly? Well, this is basalt. And basalt is a mafic extrusive igneous rock. Extrusive means that the rock cooled outside of the crust, as opposed to intrusive rocks which cool inside the crust. So basalt has many different possibilities for the minerals that are in it, but the minerals that are likely in the rock that we're seeing at Gelding Gadelier probably has high amounts of feldspars, pyroxenes, maybe some olivine, and maybe some micas. I actually saw an image that someone posted online of a piece of the lava rock with a beautiful green little olivine crystal in it. Most of the ball why do I keep saying balsamic vinegar? Most of the basalt that we're seeing forming from this lava flow is gonna be a very, very fine grained rock. And that is because when it cools outside of the crust, it quickly loses its heat and the crystals don't have a long, a long time to crystallize and form larger crystals. And the holes that you're seeing are called vesicles and they kind of look like um, a piece of sourdough bread. The holes in sourdough bread are formed when it's baking and the gases are escaping. As they escape, they expand. It's a similar thing with lava rock. So that's all I have for the questions. I hope that I helped answer any burning questions you may have had. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.